You're listening to Forecast, the marketing podcast for professional services leaders. If you're looking to generate more leads, win more deals, and take your firm to the next level, this show is your shortcut. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Ahmed Munawar, and I am excited, thrilled, honored, humbled, and a bunch of other things all at once today to have John Jantz on the show. John Jantz, if you haven't heard of him, I don't know where you've been. I don't feel like I should be introducing him, but I will go through the formality of it. John is the author of the very, very, very popular book on small business marketing called Duct Tape Marketing, most famously, but he's also the author of a few other books like Duct Tape Selling, The Commitment Engine, The Referral Engine, and most recently, SEO for Growth. John is also the founder of the Duct Tape Marketing Consultant Network. And it's really no stretch to say that John is like the godfather of the small business marketing community. He's a well-known figure in the space. His contributions are legendary. And I'm really honored to have him on the show today. John's going to walk us through a process that you can use to grow your practice, to grow your firm, to grow your agency without adding overhead. Yes, it is possible to grow without adding a whole lot of expenses onto your income statement. And John's going to walk us through what that process looks like today. Now, before I let you get to the interview with John, I have a very important announcement to make. I have launched another podcast. That's right, another one. This one is called Marketing Out Loud, and it's quite a bit different from what you're used to hearing here on Forecast. First of all, it's daily. When I say daily, I mean almost daily. It's five days a week. It is about five minutes per episode, so they're fairly short and sweet, and it's strictly monologue. So it's just me coming to you five days a week, about five minutes a day, and it's what I like to call from the trenches. So I'm gonna be sharing some just real hard-nosed business and marketing advice, the things that I'm learning from building my own practice, but also helping my clients grow theirs. So I think you're gonna like it. You can check it out at marketingoutloud.fm or search for Marketing Out Loud in your podcast player of choice. Give it a listen, subscribe to the show, and do me a favor, leave me a rating and a review because it helps more people discover the show. With that, here is John Jantz. John, thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, my pleasure. It's a real, real honor to have you on here. I'm sure most people are familiar familiar with the Duct Tape Marketing brand. Um, if they're not, I don't know where they've been for the last 10 some odd years, but just in case, why don't you give us the quick backstory of how you got started? Well, yeah, I uh, actually started my own marketing consulting practice close to 30 years ago. And like a lot of people, I, I knew I could hustle work and went out there and said yes to anybody who said they needed something related to marketing. And after a while, I found that I really enjoyed working with small business owners. But um, for any of you that have attempted, uh, they can be a real challenge. Uh, no budget to speak of, uh, no resources, uh, no attention span. And so... I decided what I needed to do if I was going to work with small business owners and I was very passionate about uh, doing so that I was going to have to create a very systematic approach where I could walk in and say, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to do. Here's the results we hope to get. And by the way, here's what it costs. And I quickly found out that in attempting to solve my own frustration, I tapped into what is, I think, still today, one of the greatest frustrations with small business. It, it, it is very hard to buy marketing services in a very comprehensive way. Everybody's selling a piece of the puzzle. And I think that's just led to, to more confusion, more overwhelm, you know, more not knowing what's working and, and, and is working. And so I created uh, this idea of marketing as a system that could be turned into almost a product. Uh, it's still a fairly innovative approach uh, for, for marketing today. And because I was trying to turn the service into a product, I had to give it a name or at least I felt like I did. And uh, so I I came up with the name Duct Tape Marketing because it felt like that that was more of a branded uh, kind of name. And uh, really the idea, uh, not only the idea of marketing as a system, but but calling it Duct Tape Marketing really took off. And and so I filled my practice, but I also started working online and uh, uh, amplifying the, the content and the system that I was producing. And that that led to several books, uh, which led to a, a network of independent marketing consultants who now uh, license uh, our methodology and uh, call themselves duct tape marketing consultants. So, John, let me let me ask you this. I think one of the things that I find is, is so powerful about your approach is not only that 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 marketing is a system and that idea itself is powerful, but that you have a system. 
How did things change for you in your own business when you had a system that you could point to and walk people through? Well, a couple things happened. It actually got much easier to sell marketing because you were basically saying, here it is, you know, here are the deliverables. Um, you know, here's what it costs. Do you want it or not? And because I, I, one of the frustrations I've had for years uh, uh, up to that point was it was always a big dance. Here's what my problem is. OK, here's how I might solve it. OK, write a proposal. And, you know, that could go on for weeks. And, and so by shortening the sales process to, to people who were ready to say they recognize the problem, they're ready to say yes. That was one of the, the biggest ahas, I think, in, in that kind of approach. But the other thing that it did, and, and again, it didn't just do this overnight. It did it because some of the things we're going to talk about probably. But it, it also made me ex much more profitable. Um, I could now uh, tell people I'm selling a result, not my time. And here's the result we're going to get. And if we get that, you're going to continue to pay me, right? And and so uh, I, I get I got better and better at achieving that result. And it really, instead of penalizing myself by just charging them less for less time, I actually was able to increase the price because I was very confident about what we were going to deliver. Did you find that the quality of the leads and the clients that were coming in improved because they knew what they were getting? That's a really great question, because I, I think the quality improved because part of my system was to make sure I was targeting the right people. Um, and because it, the, there's, you know, the, the amount of people that will take your time for free, you know, scales uh, very, 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 very well. Um, and so by putting some processes in place where they understood what I was going to deliver, they understood approach, uh, you know, that kind of education process or qualification process, what some people might call it, uh, is really what led to the, the quality of leads um, improving because somebody somebody would read my content, they would go through a process, I'd do an evaluation. Um, so by the time they got to the point where we were talking seriously about recommendations and priorities, uh, they had either left or they had, uh, you know, raised their hand and said, yes, I'm very qualified. Got it. And I know we're going to get into all that uh, in a few minutes. So, John, the topic today is how to grow your consulting practice without adding overhead. Uh, I, right away, that's a little bit controversial <laughs> because when we think about growth, we think about systems and overhead and staff and office space and all the bells and whistles that come with the consulting yeah. practice. So how do we build a practice without over adding overhead? Well, you mentioned one of them. Uh, so so. You said office and staff and something else, and, and you mentioned systems. <laughs> um, really, that has been one of uh, one of the greatest ahas for me along the, this path is that by creating a methodology, by creating a very systematic approach that's repeatable, that's documentable, uh, you're actually able to, all on your own, get more work done and be more profitable. So in essence, uh, if you come in and do nothing but get more efficient, uh, you're going to grow your practice without adding any overhead. Uh, but the world that we live in today also allows us to very easily find the best of class talent for anything we need or want uh, and be able to actually purchase that at, you know, even even paying very fair wages, being able to purchase that for much less than if you were going to bring all the trappings of bringing an internal employee in. So a lot of what I'm talking about is systems. And a lot of what I'm talking about is is delegating what should be delegated and working uh, today in a in a way that you only use the resources that you need and and you're not wasteful in having the office in having the uh, the employees. So 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 what I'm hearing from you is that there's a better way to grow than you know you're bringing in clients. There seems to be some revenue there, so you, you hire a full time staff and then they just start doing all the random stuff that you don't have time to do. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, and I think that's a very uh, apt explanation of how it usually occurs. You bring somebody in because the resume looked decent and you've got some things that you want them to do. But then you start having to say, well, I've got you 20 more hours. And so I'm going to squeeze you into this box, even though it's probably soul crushing work that I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, I need to use up your time. And so I, I think it's bad for both parties. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if, if we don't have a very systematic, streamlined you know, process, we're going to end up uh, wasting a lot of time of, of our employees, but not just time, but just giving them things to do that uh, that, that really aren't in their uh, sweet spot or that they have the the talent or desire to do. So that that to me is probably the biggest uh, crime of doing that. 
But the other thing is that you know geography is no longer an issue. I mean, I have I have about seven distributed uh, folks that um, only a couple are employees. The rest are people that uh, dedicate uh, blocks of time to us. Um, but they're they're very very good at a couple different things that we ask them to do, and we don't ask them to do anything else. And I think we get a far greater level of work that way as well. So it it sounds to me like the starting point here is to to turn your service into a product, right? To turn whatever your offering is, your consulting, your service offering, into some kind of a repeatable system process. Where do you get started doing something like that? Well, I think that it's it's two things. Um, first and foremost, you do have to have some way in which you get somebody a result. So that for for us, that was the the duct tape marketing system was what I do. But when I started having to uh, replicate. Uh, when I started to offer that what I do to a network of consultants, independent consultants, I quickly realized that I also have how I do it. I have a methodology for how I get them that result. I mean, we we all buy digital advertising. We all create content. We all you know redesign websites. I mean, that's, that's kind of what marketing consultants are involved in. But how I actually attracted a client, the discovery process, the research, the way in which I communicated uh, what we were going to do, obviously the way in which I implemented that, uh, that was all process or, or more, probably more ap- uh, appropriate, a, um, a methodology that I had sort of internalized and didn't realize I was even doing it. Uh, once I got that down on paper, once I got that into uh, systems and processes, everything really started to click into place. And I think that that a lot of folks have the thing that they do to get a result. But boy, from a client experience and from a profitability standpoint, that how you do it has to be just as repeatable. And and so that's where we're talking about bringing in, whether it's freelancers or external help, is once you have that broken down into a step-by-step process, then it becomes simpler to bring somebody else in to do that specific task. Well, well that's right. And I'll give you an example of, of a service. And again, I'm, I'm, most of my examples are going to be marketing related. And I know you have uh, consultants that are not necessarily, or listeners at least, that are not necessarily in marketing. But for example, a lot of times uh, a, a traditional marketing uh, person, consultant who didn't uh, have all the expertise in house might go out and try to find a pay-per-click advertising firm. And in our which which obviously makes sense. They don't want to get down into the minutia of that, uh, and and so consequently they're willing to partner or or pay that person or however they have an engagement. In our world, what we would do is say, look here, pay per click advertising is a very big area. AdWords, for example, is a very big and and changing area. But here's what our clients need. Here's the 25% of what AdWords can do that most of our you know, identified ideal client needs. So what if we documented that, those steps, because some of them are not necessarily what a P- pay-per-click firm would do. Uh, so what if we documented those steps and that we maintain the strategic component of that, but then actually taught uh, virtual marketing assistants how to do the lever pulling <laughs> inside of, say, AdWords, because we're not telling them they have to be AdWords certified. We're telling them follow a process. And what we're able to do then is instead of paying a you know a pay per click firm a thousand or two thousand dollars to manage AdWords campaigns, we're actually able to uh, implement those AdWords campaigns for several hundred dollars, but getting the result that we know we need because it's part of our systematic approach. So we're kind of in some ways, you know, hacking the the partnership relationship by by realizing that there are components that even that high priced pay per click firm does. that is basically a checklist. Uh, but now we get to guide exactly what that checklist looks like. So what I'm kind of hearing from you is that when you have a system in place, it almost sounds like you start selling the strategy above and beyond the tactics. Well, that, you know, go back and read anything I've written. Uh, that That's the exact line that I've used now hundreds of thousands of times, I'm going to guess, and that is strategy before tactics. And it was probably the uh, one of the biggest uh, components of the duct tape marketing system that in some ways was a differentiation. I, obviously, just even talking about a marketing system is a bit of a differentiation, but a lot of people still today, when they start talking about marketing, they immediately jump to, do we need to be on Facebook or do we need to use this kind of advertising? 
And for us, you know, our unique point of view was that that not only is marketing a system, but that it has to start with strategy before tactics. So we have a you know large foundational component to where we will help folks identify who they want to work with, their ideal client, identify a way that they can actually stand out uh, with with a core message of differentiation. Uh, obviously, content has become a huge part of, of not just a marketing tactic, but it's really the voice of strategy, uh, the customer journey of how people. In, in fact, you know, I say this all the time: uh, marketing hasn't changed so much. The way people buy has changed, uh, and we have to understand that. So those those handful of components go together before we ever start talking about the the things that we need to fix on the website or whatever you know channels we're going to go into to try to generate leads. Because if, if you if you get that part right, your marketing not only becomes easy, your decision making becomes easy. And typically, in most cases, we are able to actually save. If somebody's been spending money on marketing, we're actually able to show them how much uh, money they've been wasting without a strategy. And, and there are many things that we can do or won't do uh, anymore you know, based on developing that marketing strategy. You know, it's funny. I had another interview with a gentleman this morning and, and we were talking about how a lot of small businesses, especially solo consultants, solo professionals, they, they like to deliberate a little bit too much on the planning side, at, often at the expense of execution. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you could tell me what's what's kind of that delicate balance between yeah having a strategy, you know, spending the time required to do that well, but then having a bias towards implementation and action. Well, yeah, and I, I think we have a pretty good um, feel for that, bec mainly because the folks that we work with are are typically uh, pretty small businesses, under $10 million maybe. And so uh, they like the idea of strategy, but they can grow weary of it <laughs> pretty quickly because ultimately they want the phone to ring. Uh, so our approach is that we have a very specific strategy routine that we go through from a research and discovery and, and even then a communication standpoint. But we are uh, the the beauty is uh, most of the clients we work with have uh, pretty obvious glaring things that need to be cleaned up that could be quick wins, um, and that's actually what we call them. And so a lot of times what we will do is to buy ourselves uh, the time, the appropriate amount of time to do strategy right, and to maybe make some of the changes we need to make from a strategic standpoint. We will try to get them some quick wins so that they uh, they understand the value of what we're going to do, but they understand it pretty quickly. So in some cases, that might be uh, setting up some Facebook advertising or some Google AdWords that will immediately make the phone ring while we are working on other components. Or it might be getting them some reviews uh, in, in, you know, in Google and Yelp and those kind of places because we know, first off, that, that um, they haven't been able to do that. They haven't been able to crack that nut and, and they get a lot of... A lot of times, you know, getting those five star reviews uh, really gives them a lot of feel for, yeah, this is, you know, I like that. <laughs> I haven't been able to do that. Uh, so we, we marry quick wins uh, with uh, our very strategic approach. I want to go on a little bit of a tangent here because you mentioned reviews and I know local marketing has been a big focus for you as of late. Are yeah. uh, online reviews in Google specifically, is that, is that really only for a local business or if I'm online, is that important for me as well? I think it's important for any business. Obviously, the local SEO component, somebody standing on a corner with their phone, you know, the, that, that it, and you come up on the map because one of the components is, is reviews. Uh, that's obviously a critical uh, component for local businesses. But I think today uh, it's, you know, it's not just hotels and restaurants that, that, uh, that, that live and die by reviews. I mean, every type of business, I think, can benefit from the social proof that, that being highly reviewed uh, can bring you. So, I, I, you know, I'm not a local business at all, uh, but I, I ask people all the time uh, for reviews because I think it, uh, it offers some social proof that they are going to find. I mean, that, that's, you know, even if you get referred Somebody says, oh, no, you need to hire John. He's the greatest. Well, the first thing they're going to do is turn online and, and see what the what all the signals are. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, John, going back to this idea of having a wait, system. Wait, wait, I, I need to interrupt you. What, what was your tangent on that then? So uh, that, that uh, people that aren't local businesses are saying they don't need to worry about reviews? Well, I don't think it's on their radar. Right. I think yeah, I think yeah, a lot yeah. of people think, oh, Google reviews. Yeah, that makes sense for the, uh, you know, the, the hair salon, the hair salon right. or, <laughs> or the massage therapist or, you know, even within a professional yep, yep. services context, the, lo the local accounting firm or law firm, yeah. but not the digital entrepreneur, digital consultant. 
I just think it's part of the, the, the signals. I think it's another thing that's going to help you rank when somebody goes out there uh, and searches. I think it's real estate that you can claim. Uh, it's content, quite frankly. I mean, if, if nothing else, if that's an easy way for people to review you as a testimonial and then you run that content on your website, uh, that certainly has value. And what prior, what properties, rather, should we be looking at? Google's the obvious one. Where else should we be looking at these reviews? Well, so one of the things that Google is doing is they're actually going out there and finding the review sites that are relevant to specific industries, and, and they are showing that. So if you search for certain types of uh, businesses or industries, you're going to see – you know, lawyers, uh, uh, AVO reviews are, are going to start showing up, you know, remodeling contractors, house uh, reviews are going to start showing up. But certainly Facebook, uh, I think, is one that's that's probably applicable to just about, you know, any type of business. And, and Google is surfacing, you know, Facebook reviews. So the, it, if you're in an industry that has a, a dominant player and you can kind of research that pretty easily, uh, you, you want to make sure you're represented well there. Uh, but if uh, uh, you know Google and Facebook are the two that I think are must-haves for pretty much every type of business. And I think probably the low-hanging fruit here is you likely do have, or if you don't, you should have a process in place to get testimonials. You bet. So just go ahead and ask the client to put them on Google or Facebook first, and then put them on your website. Yeah. And and you know there are some industries that uh, people just aren't that tech savvy and leaving a Google review is even hard, but I'm guessing the, the folks you're talking about that are predominantly are online businesses have clients that are predominantly online. And so that gets even easier. Yeah. And I mean, there's so many tools out there now that make it so much That's easier, right. right? I mean, That's get five stars is a popular one, but there are many others. Yep. 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 So, so going Absolutely. back to this idea of, of systematizing your service into a product, one of the challenges that I think people might, uh, might face here is if, if I'm a client facing consultant, and I like talking to the client, I like building that relationship, I like being really close to the work. Does this mean I have to now take a step back and be a little bit removed from the work? Well, I, would, I think there's some things that, unless you are gonna have a, a team of consultants, say in your organization, if you're still gonna remain the consultant, there are parts that you're never going to delegate. I don't think you delegate strategy. I don't think you delegate the client relationship. Um, I don't think you, in some cases, delegate the conversation about how to do even more uh, for a client. So, so you know, in our world, the way we kind of uh, like to uh, to coach at least our consultants on is, is those components are typically going to remain theirs. Uh, but everything after that, you know, how to get a blog post on the website, you know, how to set up the review funnel, how to set up AdWords campaigns, those are things that uh, you can get people to do in a proper system quite well on your behalf. Maybe even a lot of the communication of what's being done from an activity standpoint uh, for the client, uh, it, you can get done you know, by that same, you know, let's call them account coordinator uh, or virtual marketing assistant, whatever you want to call them. And I think what it does is it actually frees you up to be more creative for the client. It frees you up to build a stronger relationship, for, to look for opportunities beyond you know the obvious things that you're doing and, and if you get bogged down in doing uh, the the actual work i don't know that that's going to provide any more value for the client um and, and actually i personally think that that looking for ways to innovate what it is that you're doing from a strategic standpoint is where you can actually uh, be even closer <laughs> to doing the client and actually provide far greater value get all the stuff that that you know you can get done for 20 25 dollars an hour into a very systematic approach, and you'll actually provide, not only will the client probably get better coverage, frankly, because there's a lot of stuff I don't like doing <laughs> that uh, somebody else will do a far better job, uh, but it also frees you up then to to really be a consultant. All that other work is not consulting. All that other work is uh, is really just, in some ways, busy work on behalf of the client once you systemize it. So, so the bright line here seems to be strategy versus execution. Strategy you should own as the consultant. Execution, maybe you're doing some of it, but the stuff that you can easily outsource that can be systematized into a process, you're better off having somebody else do that so you can focus in on the higher level strategy work. Well, I think so. Um, and, and you can build, you can still build a structure. I mean, in, in the typical marketing consulting or small agency world, you would have the 
chief consultant. Uh, you would have the account coordinators and you'd probably have a traffic manager is what we used to call them back in the day. Uh, with the idea being that, you know, if you think about a, a tier of, you know, one consultant can manage uh, six or eight clients and each of these uh, account coordinators maybe can can manage uh, three or four of those clients, uh, you know, virtually. Uh, and then you have kind of that traffic manager or project manager that's making sure all the deadlines are met, you know, across all clients, uh, keeping keeping things moving, even keeping the consultant you know, t plugged into what uh, uh, what they're supposed to do or what they promised. And and the consultant's job then is to make sure that the results come in, maybe to do the reporting uh, aspect, certainly to uh, to keep the client relationship uh, uh, component high. So, John, shifting gears a little bit to the marketing side of things, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that we talked about earlier was when you came onto the scene, this idea of marketing as a system was a fairly disruptive point of view, and, and that got quite a bit of attention. How do we as consultant service providers develop some kind of a unique point of view that's going to stand out in the marketplace? Well, it's gotten harder. Uh, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that. But I think it comes down to truly understanding. In a lot of cases, we back into these things. You know, in my case, uh, I actually was trying to solve you know my frustration. It turned out that it that that you know was really a point of differentiation. So sometimes we kind of back into these things, but there's there's two places that I always like to tell people to look, and I because I can't give you the answer. I, I know that it's probably there, but I also know that it's unique. Um, and so the two places that I try to tell people is, can you find a way to change the context of how you know your world or your ideal client you know views what you offer your industry? So if I'll give it an example, quick example. It's not a marketing person, but uh, we had an accountant or an uh, uh, architect, sorry, an architect firm. And, you know, they were like all the architect firms. We do good work um, was kind of their point of differentiation. And we started interviewing some of their clients. And, and there's, you know, if you want a tactic to take away from this, you know, that's one of the ways you find your core point of difference is you ask your clients uh, what you really do that they value. But we asked their clients, and we kept hearing this, well, they help us get paid faster. And so I was like, oh, wait a minute, we need, <laughs> I need to know something about that. Um, and it turns out that they had some um, people that were very plugged in politically. One was a city council person, one was on a zoning board. And so they knew what all the requirements were in the city. They, they knew what was coming. They knew what the priorities were. And so they were actually able to get their plans approved uh, much faster. So they were able to kind of cut through the red tape, and that got the contractor paid faster or because they could start the job. Um, and, and start, uh, you know, drawing down on the, on the, the loan or the money. And so that became their core point of differentiation. Their business development people would actually go out and talk to contractors about uh, starting projects faster and about getting paid faster. And as long as they believed that they could also design the building, <laughs> that was a huge change in the context of how they saw an architect. And, and so I think you've got to find, you know, that thing. And I, I will say again that, you know, if you have an existing clientele, uh, go out and uh, um, go out and ask them uh, if you have lots of reviews, uh, regardless of the type of business you are, uh, start looking at uh, what people are actually saying in those reviews. So uh, quite often uh, they will leave hints as to what it is that you do. Uh, that they value that you may not be communicating. They just sense it because they're a client of yours. Uh, another small business example that I use all the time, um, a tree service that uh, um, they were a family owned local business, third generation, and that's what they blasted everywhere. We went and read the reviews and the reviews, almost all of them said they show up on time <laughs> and they clean up the job site. Uh, and so that became their core point of differentiation. Uh, that was the problem that they were solving. So I, I can, you know, I could talk for 20 minutes about examples because I love uh, this idea. But you're trying to make the competition irrelevant or at least incomparable with a core point of view and difference. And that, you know, to me, marketing as a system is the one that that I kind of stuck a flag in the sand and said, this is my point of differentiation. Well, I think the architecture example is, is just perfect, right? Because 
they never would have come up with that on their own. <laughs> if you ask any professional who's worth his salt what, what their unique point of view is or what their perspective is, they're going to look inward. They're going to think about how smart they are, how good their team is, how good their process is. Uh, an, architect, an architect's never going to say, well, we, we help them get paid on time. That's, that's never <laughs> going to come to mind unless you ask the customers. Um, yeah. no, so I think that's, that's perfect. Well, and, and, and to, to just one more point on that, they actually resist. They didn't think that felt very important. <laughs> um, but once they started using it, they saw how impactful it was, how it, it, it the, instead of the conversation being, oh, you're an architect, that's nice. It became, wait a minute, how do you, how do you help us get paid faster? I want to know more about that. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because I think I see this a lot in my space, right? Consultants and professional service providers, they like to think that it's all because of them. Right? It's, got, it's got something to do with their innate abilities or their smarts or their sophistication. So to suggest any kind of differentiator or value proposition that doesn't have to do with you know how smart they are can be a, can be a struggle. Well, I, I, you know, in, in the end, it may be how smart they are, but everybody's saying that, you know, that's pretty hard one to prove necessarily until somebody's working with you. So the differentiator has to get their attention first so that you can prove how smart you are. I think that's the, the key there. And, and what I always tell people is you know, look for problems. You know, what are clients whining about? You know, what problems are you actually solving? You know, even if even if they come to you with the things that like we have all the time, we have people, their problem or the thing that they're, they're whining about is that they always seem to be competing on price. Well, that's not a pricing issue. That's a strategy issue. <laughs> and so we're then able to to take that problem um, and turn it around and say, you know, here's here's the solution to that problem. But if we're just always out there saying you need strategy, you need strategy that that doesn't resonate because maybe everybody's saying that. But if we're talking about our ability to help them uh, charge a premium for their services, all of a sudden that's addressing, that's, that's making a promise about a problem that they feel is very real. And that's when we get to start talking about the system as the solution. So I think it almost comes down to me uh, uh, as a question of what's the role of marketing. So I think a lot of people think that well, marketing should communicate to the prospect that that we are the the best choice, that we're better than everybody else. Uh, but is is it is that really what it's about, or is it more about just being different and getting attention and starting a conversation? Like, how do you define well, the role of marketing? Yeah. So the, the 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 challenge is that it's a journey. It's not a we got your attention. I mean, that's one step. <laughs> but now we have to actually. Uh, build trust. Now we have to actually get you to experience what it's like to work with us. Now we have to actually bring you on board and keep that experience high uh, so that you want to buy more from us, so that you want to actually refer us to your friends, neighbors, and colleagues. That's, that's you know, I, I define that as the marketing hourglass. It's no like, trust, try, buy, repeat, and refer. Those are all stages that we need to try to guide as marketers. And there is no, you know, it's not run an ad by now and we're done. It's, it's kind of organizing the behavior of those seven stages that I actually think most of our clients want to experience. They may not be able to articulate that, but they want to go out and find people uh, that, uh, that are talking about the, the problem that they have. They want to uh, come to like those people or at least uh, suspect that they have something for them. They certainly won't go past uh, go without a level of trust that they're going to get a result. Uh, the buying experience, staying high, having uh, opportunities to uh, to repeat because I had such a great experience. I'm just going to go back there. And I think as human beings, we're wired if, to to refer refer businesses that exceed our expectations. And so marketing is really uh, is really doing the things that you need to do to logically guide your clients, your prospects and clients through all seven of those stages. John, I got to ask you about lead generation. Uh, for for consultants and service providers, I mean, I know you're you're a big proponent of creating content, and I mean, we could spend days and days and weeks and weeks reading through the duct tape marketing blog on content creation and lead generation, uh, but it's it's a lot of work in the end, right? And I'm I'm looking for your best advice on if you're not in a consistent content creation routine, what's the best and and where is the best way to get started? Well, the the thing that I like to do, particularly with professional service providers, consultants, uh, I, I'm, and there's kind of this feeling with all the stuff we see online now that you have to set up these really complex lead generation funnels that have remarketing as part of them and and you know 
tripwires and all, all the other funny terms that people like to make up for this stuff. And the reality is most professional service providers, most consultants would be fine with six, eight, maybe 10 more clients, tops, probably maxed out it at, at that point. And so, you know, let's back up and simplify this. You don't need five blog posts a week. What if you committed, what if I could get you to commit to one sort of epic piece of content a month for the next six months? And by epic, I just mean useful. I mean in depth, uh, something that really addresses a problem that you know well how to solve uh, and that you are going to write the ultimate guide to solving that problem. And that when you went out now and started promoting that piece, first off, it's going to be in depth enough. It's going to be quality enough that people are going to want to share it. You're going to be able to go out to places like Facebook and promote it. Um, and, and what you're going to do is you're going to send traffic at that piece of content that people, again, are going to find extremely useful. And when they get there, you're also going to offer them a checklist. I, I, we call this a content upgrade. I'm not the person who made that uh, that term up, but but they like the content. And so now you give them a little piece of something that actually makes the content even more uh, in exchange for an email. Um once they get that, they've clearly identified themselves as somebody that was interested in that topic or interested in solving that problem. So you just create a, an email nurture series that, that continues to drip out even more content, even more value. Uh, I, I'm going to want to get that person, you know, the, the marketing automation software that's out there now, even the simplest ones will tell you if somebody opened that email or clicked on that email or that link in that email. I'm going to want to I'm going to want to start targeting those folks and saying, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to go for an appointment now. <laughs> you know, they, they came and they, uh, they were interested in the topic. They downloaded the, uh, the free piece of content. They clicked on one of my emails. And so I'm going to go out and, uh, you know, I can do, I can do a little research online to make sure that that person is somebody that I, I, I might want to have as a client, but then I'm going to, I'm going to go out and get in front of them and I'm going to uh, put a process, a, a, a consulting process or an evaluation process in front of them uh, that, that, you know, since they've identified themselves, that they will find highly valuable because I just need, you know, six to 10 more clients. And all the consultants that I work with tell me that if they can get in front of 10 people, they'll turn five of them into clients, 10 people with the right problem and, the, and, and you know, the, the, the right uh, demographics and things. And so if you're running your campaigns to just to maybe get yourself 20 or 30 opportunities to get those 10 appointments, you're going to be much more effective by spending a greater amount of time on fewer people. I mean, that you, you make it sound so simple, it's, it's almost frustrating, but I get, I, get, I get what you're saying. So so quality over, over quantity, really good piece of content once a month, put in a content upgrade, that, that all makes sense. What should you be saying in that email nurturing sequence? Well, well what I like to do is just continue to add value. So, so you know, if, if you, if your topic was a, um, then I want areas to, to hopefully, uh, shed more light on more problems that I know they have and give them more opportunities to, to get to know, like, and trust me, uh, in, in our world, you know, there are all kinds of tools where they can do a website evaluation, or we can actually evaluate their, their reputation. We can, uh, we can actually give them information about, you know, their competitors. Um, so, so we actually start offering some reports like that that are tools that, you know, generally speaking, are going to show that they got some work to do. <laughs> and uh, by virtue of that, we can then start saying, hey, how would you like to fix that problem? Um, and that's how we get to uh, really one of our kind of evaluation uh, processes that's really going to be our first chance to, uh, for them to try what it might be like to work with us. And that's, you know, that's maybe prior to an appointment or prior to a, a situation where um, we're going to talk about proposing to do some work for them, but they're going to they're going to actually experience some value before we ever do. One of the recurring themes that's come up here on the show um, with various guests that I've interviewed is is the idea of the free consultation. Should yeah. I do it? Should I not do it? What's your take there? So we, we have both. And if you're going to do the free consultation, you have to understand who that's going to attract. Um, and, and sometimes it's a numbers game. You know, we have a lot of new consultants that, that join our uh, the consultant network and they they don't have anybody to talk to. <laughs> they, yeah, they don't you know, they've come out of corporate. They don't really have a big community. So in some cases, talking to five people a day, 
three of whom are maybe not that qualified, might be an okay use of their time. But at some point, uh, you, you want to make uh, sure that you are, are targeting the right folks. So if you're going to use a free evaluation, rather than just putting that out as a public come and get it, you'd actually start identifying folks. And, and again, this goes back to that sort of simplify. Um, identify a list of 100 businesses or people that you know you would like to work with. And the, the, the online world makes it so easy for you to know a lot about a business and what, what their challenges are and what they're doing well. So target those businesses and go out and start uh, promoting that free evaluation perhaps to them. A better approach, quite frankly, and, and the one that, that I promote for most professional service businesses is to come up with a very high value paid process. So we have a, a we call it a total online presence audit, where we'll actually go in and audit somebody's website, their SEO, their content, their reputation, their ad, if they're spending money you know, in digital advertising. And we'll produce a, a, a kind of a findings report. Uh, we'll even do, give them a competitive landscape. And we'll schedule a time to meet with them and tell them kind of step by step how they're doing, what they're doing in each of those areas and end really with some recommendations and kind of their highest priority fixes. We, we happen today to charge $799 for, for that report. And, and every single person that goes through it just talks about how valuable it was. Uh, they get to spend an hour with a consultant who has looked you know, deeply under the hood at everything they're doing maybe validate the work that's being done by somebody else or uh, show them you know, where they have things that need to be fixed. But the biggest key to this is uh, a couple things. First off, the, the, the dollar amount is not enough to turn people away, but it's enough to demonstrate that if somebody's willing to invest $800 in just getting a baseline, A, they probably have more than $800 to, to spend on their marketing, but also it demonstrates that they have a mindset of that's what it takes, that, that you're investing uh, in marketing. From a practical side, uh, for the consultant at least, what this does is it, you basically get paid to do the work that you were probably gonna have to do in discovery anyway. Um, but now when you are going to uh, give those findings, you, you're essentially making, it's, it's essentially your proposal. <laughs> I mean, you've done the work to say, here's, you know, here's what we recommend you do uh, to A, fix, and B, you know, go to where you want to go at, at the next level. And so, uh, it, it, you know, I think every consultant should get to the point where they can lean very, very heavily on that type of a tool. And it doesn't mean to say that you wouldn't have a no-cost or even lower-cost uh, opportunity as you were just getting started, but that should be your ultimate goal. And so the bright line there that I'm hearing is once you feel like you're having a lot of conversations, they're not 100 percent qualified, but there's good lead flow. That might be a good time to make that switch to the high value offering. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll tell you another way that you might uh, the, use it is uh, once you're out there for a while and you start getting referrals. Um, and, it, it, you know, in our case, uh, obviously, we've got a pretty big uh, footprint out there. And so we get leads every single day that are basically saying, hey, I want to work with you. Um, and it can be a great way to qualify whether or not you want to work with them. <laughs> so not only did they take the you know the offer and pay you a little money, but you now uh, can dig in and and maybe realize, hey, this you know th this isn't a person that we want to work with. Uh, there you know you can I, I won't name any names, but we came across one of these where the person had just made up the reviews, um, and they thought that was okay. I mean, these weren't even real people <laughs> that were raving about their product. And, and you know, that to me is a pretty serious red flag of whether or not we'd want to work with somebody. Yeah, it's funny. I think that kind of underscores the value in Google third party reviews because nobody really believes anything anymore because you can make yeah. up anything. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, listen, John, this has been this has been amazing. Anything else that you want to mention today that we haven't covered on the topic? You know, all good interviewers ask that question, and I, um, I just always let it all out. So I don't really, uh, <laughs> I don't really hold anything back. But I, you know, I, I know that your audience is uh, in professional services. I think uh, the, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention duct tape marketing consultant dot com is really where we talk about uh, if this idea of collaborating with like-minded uh, uh, consultants and getting a lot of tools and resources uh, along the lines of what we've talked about today is interesting. Uh, that might be a good place to start. 
Yeah, I think it definitely is. And we're going to have links to, to that and the duct tape marketing blog in the show notes. John, again, it's been a real pleasure and a great honor to have you on the show. Well, you know, as, you, as you can tell, I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. You bet. Hey, it's Ahmed here again. Before I let you go, there are two things I want you to do. The first is, if you like what you hear, go ahead and subscribe to the show on iTunes or Google Play by visiting forecast.fm and clicking on the relevant link. While you're at it, please do leave us a rating or a review because it helps more people discover the show. The second thing is I want you to grab my free course on the five P's of lead generation for professional services firms. Inside the course, you will get a step-by-step framework to help you generate a flood of new business for your firm. The course is 100% free of charge and you can get immediate access at 5leadgen.com and you can spell out five or use the number, either one works. That's 5leadgen.com. Thanks for listening.